Hi, this is Anil and welcome to the video tutorial on Java programming. So in the previous tutorials, you know, we have learned about the single dimensional arrays, the two dimensional arrays, you know, how to create them, how to use them, and also how to use for loops to print out the values in the arrays. All right. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys about the multi-dimensional arrays. So we're going to talk about the arrays which are going to have more than two dimensions. Similar to the two dimensional arrays in Java, we can create the three dimensional, four dimensional and similarly up to n dimensional arrays. So here in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create and use the three dimensional arrays. So a two dimensional array consists of a one dimensional array and similarly this three dimensional array is going to consist of a two dimensional array. So here for the demonstration purpose, let's say we want to store the internal and external mark of two exams for let's say three students. So what we're going to do is we're going to store the internal and external marks, you know, the internal mark and the external mark for the two exams, exam one and exam two for three students, student one, student two, and student three. So here, just for the simplicity, I have drawn the image for, let's say, the student two. So for a student, we're gonna be storing the marks of two exams, you know, you guys can see, two exams, and each exam is gonna contain the marks of internal and external exams. So here, in this case, we can use a three dimensional array. So here you guys can see we have a two dimensional array in every element of this uh, array. And in this two dimensional array, we have a single dimensional array inside every element. So here for this exam one, we have a single dimensional array. And for this exam two, we have a single dimensional array. And uh, and this exam one and this internal and external marks are going to consist of two dimensional array and uh, together with the students the exams and the mark are going to make for a three dimensional array so what we're going to learn is you know how to create and use a three dimensional array in our program so first thing is to create a three dimensional array first we need to specify the data type so our array is going to contain the integer value, so it's going to be int. Then since this is a three dimensional array, we're going to have three square brackets. And then we need to give the array name. Let's say students mark marks. And then uh, we're going to use the equal to symbol and then we're going to allocate the memory. So it's going to be new int and then three pair of square brackets. And between these square brackets, in this case, first we need to specify how many students information that you want to store. Let's say we want to store the information of three students. And in the second square bracket, we need to specify how many exams results that you want to store. We want to store the results of two exams per students. So it's going to be two. And in the third square brackets, we need to specify how many marks you want to store for one exam. We want to store the internal and external marks, which means two. So this is it. This is going to allocate a three dimensional array for us. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to store the value in this. So let's say we want to store the internal and external mark for the exam one. And we're gonna do that for the first student. So first we need to write the array name, students marks. And then we're gonna be storing for the student one. And that's why the index is gonna be zero. And then we're gonna be storing for the first exam. So the index is gonna be zero. And then we want to store the internal mark. It's gonna be zero. And let's say a value um, 55. And then I just gonna copy this and paste it in the next line and we're going to be storing the external mark for that student for that particular exam so let's say 65 
Now we have stored the internal and external mark for a student for one particular exam. So here, you know, we have stored the internal marks for this internal and external mark for the first exam. And similarly, if you want to store the internal and external mark for the second exam at that time, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in the next line and we're going to change this one to one. And uh, you guys can see here, you know, we will be actually storing for the student one and let's just cut this. All right, we are storing the internal and external mark for the student one for two exams. Let's, let's change these values. 53, 68 and now as you guys can see it's gonna be 53 and 68 for the exam 2. So to print out the values we can uh, use this same method. So I'm just gonna use the system dot out dot print line and it's gonna be this index so i'm just gonna copy this and paste it here and if i run this we should get 53 you guys can see we got 53 so similarly you know if you want to use the for loop here then you guys need to use three for loop because you know we have a three dimensional array so it's gonna be four and let's say our student yes number you know the student number and let's begin with zero because you know the index starts from zero and then uh, yes number is less than this array so it's gonna be I'm just gonna copy this and paste it here dot length and then yes number plus plus you know this is gonna loop through for each students and then we need to loop through for each exams for this each student so it's gonna be another for loop so for and let's say exam and the index will start from zero then exam is less than we're gonna have the students marks I'm going to copy that and paste it here and we need to get the exam so it's going to be the index that is yes num for the particular student dot length and then exam plus plus so this is going to loop through for each exams for each students the next thing that we need to do is we need to loop through each marks you know the internal and external marks so we're going to use another for loop for and it's going to be int and let's say marks and let's initialize this one to a value of zero and then this marks will be less than we need this one so i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to paste it here and we need to check for the exam also dot length and then marks plus plus now this inner for loop is gonna loop for every mark you know the internal or the external mark for every exam for every students so here okay you know i haven't created the variable that's why you know we're getting error so it should be int student number so here what we're gonna do is we're gonna print out the values so it's gonna be system dot out dot print line and uh, I'm just gonna say marks are and then in the next line I'm just gonna use system dot out dot print and here we're gonna refer to the marks internal and external marks so just gonna copy that and paste it here and it's gonna be marks yeah that's it and i'm gonna cut this marks from here and i'm gonna have that right here you know before this uh, third for loop and then 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a print line statement it's gonna be system dot out dot print line and this is gonna print out properly you know now we are just making the output pretty so I can add a tab here and you know if you guys don't understand all these things just copy this code you know we are just making it to look pretty that's it and then here we can have another print line statement so I'm gonna copy this and paste it here and I'm gonna say exam number and then I'm gonna refer to exam and we're gonna add one to that so that you know we'll get the counting from one not from zero and then I'm gonna have another empty print line statement here you know after this exams for loop and then I just gonna have a print line statement here and we're gonna say student number and I just gonna refer the s num and I'm gonna add one to that because you know the counting starts from one not from zero and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment this line you know I don't want to print it here because you know our for loop is gonna print out all the things and I'm gonna run this code right now and now you guys can see for the student number one for the exam number one we have the marks 55 and 65 that we have uh, you know specified here and then for for the exam number two we have the marks 53 and 68 that we have passed here and then we haven't set the marks for other students for other exams so they will be containing the default values so you guys can see here for student number two for the exam number one marks are zero and zero you know the internal and external mark and for exam number two marks are zero and zero and similarly for the student number three so here this for loop is gonna loop through all the elements of our three dimensional array and it's gonna print out the values stored in that all right the next thing that i want you guys to teach you is uh, we can initialize this three dimensional array in a simpler way so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna comment this code here and up to here and then i'm gonna create this array again so it's gonna be int then uh, students mark so i'm just gonna copy and paste it here and we're gonna initialize the values right here so you guys have learned how to initialize the values for a two-dimensional arrays and similar to that we're gonna initialize the values here so we were you know initializing the values for a two-dimensional array you know separated by the commas and similarly here we have the three-dimensional array so we're gonna be initializing by using the curly braces and it's gonna be only two so the marks are gonna be let's say internal marks 33 external mark 66 for one exam and for another exam let's say 55 comma 99 so I just gonna copy this and we're gonna have the comma here paste it here and let's say 44 55 90 67 I'm gonna copy it again and paste it here and I'm just gonna change this one to 4 5 6 9 so now we have initialized the marks for three students and for every student we have set the marks for two exams and in that exams we have set the internal and the external marks for each exam so I'm just gonna save this and I'm gonna run this now you guys can see for the student number one marks are for the exam one is 33 and 66 and for the exam 2 55 and 99 for the student number two for the exam one 44 and 55 and then for the exam number two 67 and 90 for the student number three uh, for the exam one four and five and for exam number two six and nine so this is about the 
three dimensional arrays in Java. I know it is a bit complex topic and also it's very difficult to understand these things but you know this is how you know the three dimensional arrays can be used in Java. So similarly you know you can create the four dimensional or five dimensional or you know up to n dimensional arrays and as the dimension increases you know it's going to be very difficult to create and use that array. So thank you for watching guys don't forget to subscribe to my channel the source code will be available in my web blog learningladeducation.blogspot.com and I'll see you in the next tutorial.